Hey, Pretty Girl Club. So I wanted to address the whole no one's jealous of you talking point because one thing that I've noticed is that as this niche begins to grow and as we are sharing our stories online and there are literally thousands of us beginning to come together, we've got dozens of new YouTube channels being formed. I've noticed that some people are trying to make the talking point of no one is jealous of you guys. Um, first of all, it is statistically impossible for no one out of 8 billion people on this earth to be jealous of a lighter skinned person. Not only that, but unambiguous black women themselves have been the main ones complaining about, you know, colorism and they're the ones who brought up this conversation. And what a lot of people don't understand is that a conversation means that two people are talking. Okay, so it means that you had your turn to speak. Um, over here in the mixed race community, us darker skinned mixed women, lighter skinned black women, light skinned mixed women, we've given you guys a chance to speak freely. It's actually been about a decade um, that we have not said anything to respond. But now we are speaking up because we are tired of the false narratives that are being portrayed. But um, since people were doing this no one's jealous of you talking point, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't crazy because I am totally willing to admit if my talking points are wrong or if I make a mistake on something. So, you know, just to make sure, I ended up doing a very quick Google search. I didn't even search on YouTube or TikTok because I was like, you know what? People do stuff to get attention. Let me just ignore the thousands of videos that are on there. But let me start off with this one. Um, so I came across this article and this lady, she's an unambiguous monoracial dark skinned black woman. This article is titled The Ugly Truth behind why I hate light-skinned women. So in this article, she's talking about how she um, was around this lighter-skinned girl. And I'm just gonna read a couple of the quotes from the article. She says, I am only half listening now because my mind is preoccupied with thoughts of how perfect she looks, standing in front of that mirror, nervously smoothing down her perfect dress, resisting the urge to chew on her perfect fingernails. If she looks at me, she will see me staring at her, and on my face will be a mixture of awe admiration and something else. And I thought that this quote was interesting because I have talked on this channel and complained about how sometimes you feel like people are staring at you. So I didn't, th I thought that I was delusional when I made that video. And that is actually one of the top performing videos on this channel. And a lot of you guys in the comment section have talked about that as well, where sometimes other women will stare at you and it's like, you don't necessarily think like, oh my God, it's cause I'm so gorgeous. So sometimes it's like, well, I do feel like maybe some of it could be people could be staring because of envy or maybe they are kind of comparing themselves to you. So that's the first thing this unambiguous woman admits in this article is that she is basically comparing herself to this woman. This woman also talks about um, how she envied this woman and she says, People say that being light-skinned is a social currency. In the economy that is black beauty, the light-skinned ones are the goddesses. Men flock to their temples to worship. Regular women either sit at their feet playing the role of the dark BFF or stand in the courtyard hurling insults while the choir sings, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. So I think this was a very interesting quote as well because she is equating light skin to social currency. And by the way, I, I'm not saying that people can't use their skin tones as social currency because I really think that you can, uh, regardless of what your skin tone is. I think that if your skin tone stands out from the group of people that you're around, then yes, you can use it as a social currency. And this is also why I say that I feel like a lot of these women who talk about light skin privilege, they're talking about black men because when I think about a lot of the colorism complaints, usually it's based around relationships or dating apps or what unambiguous black men think. And first of all, we need to uh, get rid of the stereotype that if you're light skinned, you automatically date unambiguous monoracial dark skinned black men. But I've noticed that because those are the men that those women want, they automatically just assume that like you're going to get access to those men. And so I find it interesting how she called it social currency. She said, there I was standing in this well-lit bathroom, staring at this goddess in front of me and realizing that this envy thing was very much alive on the inside of me because she was beautiful. And in her space, I didn't feel like I could be beautiful. The mirror, the bathroom, the world didn't have room for my kind of beauty when she was around. So this actually reminds me of the talking points on a lot of colorism channels where they say they're being replaced. They will say that 
this light skinned woman replaced a dark skinned woman. Um, in all those black love movies, the, the woman is always lighter than the man. So even if the woman is like not very light skin, even if she is quote unquote dark skin, she would be the, the lightest of the dark skin. So again, with this talking point of feeling replaced. And then she says, if you're honest, you felt the same way. You've hated going out with your friend to watch her hog everyone's attention. So she's talking to unambiguous women because this blog is created for unambiguous black women. She says, you've struggled with loving her to bits, but hating her at the same time. You've tried to make up for what you lack in looks by having a larger than life personality. So I have noticed um, even online, a lot of women, they will claim that mixed race women that we hog up all the attention. Notice how they said that about the natural hair movement. They said, you know, the darker skinned mixed women who have the curly hair, they were soaking up all the attention or the lighter skinned women were soaking up the attention. So she is kind of playing into the stereotype that if you are pretty or if you are lighter skinned or mixed race, you are hogging attention. I'm sure that a lot of you guys in the comment section have probably been accused of taking attention away from, from another person or like trying to steal someone's man or being an attention whore, even if you are not trying to get attention. This woman goes on to say, I hate light skinned women because I perceive them as having attained a status, reached a level, met a standard of beauty that I could never meet. They don't have to try. They woke up like this. This makes me envious. There are two kinds of women reading this post. Pretty women and regular women. The pretty women are like my light-skinned friend in the bathroom. You're pretty all day, every day, even without makeup, even after an all-nighter where you didn't get a wink of sleep. The regular women, on the other hand, have nothing that makes you exceptionally beautiful. And after an all-nighter, you look like you've been run over by an express train three times, followed by a convoy of gushes after getting caught up in taxi war crossfire. So do you see how this woman is literally equating all of the beauty to skin tone? I've noticed that um, a lot of women who have inferiority complexes about their skin tone, um, it seems like some of them have a mindset of, if only I were light skinned, then I would be pretty. And so then they will project that onto light skinned people and they will say, you only got to where you are because you're light skinned. You're not pretty, you're just light skinned. And it's like, well, by saying that comment, you're actually proving that you think that light skin makes someone pretty. Hence why you say, I Spice only got to where she is because she's light skin. She's only considered pretty because she's light skin. It's like, no, you only consider her pretty because she is light skinned. But let's take a look at some other comments that I found online. This one says, I am envious of light skinned black women. By the way, this was found in the black lady subreddit. So once again, for the people who are trying to say no one is jealous of you, which is statistically impossible, but for the people who they try to act like this jealousy doesn't exist, or they try to pretend like internalized colorism doesn't exist, because that's really where this jealousy comes from. It's internalized colorism. So if you say no one's jealous of light skinned women, you're essentially saying internalized colorism doesn't exist. And we all know that it does. But since people want to challenge our talking points in this niche, let's go ahead and pull up the receipts. So this girl says, I am envious of light skinned black women. I think I'm pretty or at least decent looking, but I honestly wish I looked more like my friend. I notice more men are attentive to her than me. She is light skinned, long hair, pink lips, pink gums, tall with an hourglass shape. I am brown skinned. Basically, I'm not very dark or light skinned. I'm shorter than her, brown gums, brown lips, short afro. Whenever we are in photos together, I feel envious because she is prettier than me. I don't want to be the stereotypical dark-skinned woman who hates light-skinned black women. I want to stop comparing myself to her. Okay, we've got so much to um, unpack here. So she starts off by noticing the tiny details about her light-skinned friend. She said she's light-skinned, long hair, pink lips, pink gums, tall, hourglass shape. So this is exactly what I'm talking about when I say Whenever people pedestalize you, they hyper-focus on you. They hyper-focus on your features. They hyper-focus on everything, your eye color, whether or not you have acne, how tall are you, what color are your gums? Like I've never even heard stuff like this. And notice how this woman compares every aspect of herself to this woman. And I also found it interesting how she says herself, she even admits, I don't want to be the stereotypical dark-skinned woman who hates light-skinned black women, which, which implies that it is common enough 
for a stereotype to be formed about darker skinned unambiguous women potentially being jealous. So that's another interesting comment. So this is another thing that I saw on the mixed race Reddit. This person says, how common is the black boys slash girls were jealous of me feeling among mixed folks? And then let's see what some people said. This girl says, when I was at school, I was hated by the black girls and I never understood why they didn't want to be my friend. I had such a low self-esteem, so I couldn't fathom what they'd have to be jealous of. But my mother always told me, they're obsessed with you. They're jealous. Why else would they follow you around and keep pointing out your skin tone? It took years before I started to agree with her. Only recently, I started to piece together things these girls said to me, and I have accepted many of them probably were jealous. They had a lot of misplaced feelings, assuming if they were light-skinned like me, their life would be easier. Plus, a lot of them thought and told me this that they thought I was thinking I was better than them for being lighter when I wanted nothing more than to just be their friend. I never ever brought up my skin tone. They did, all the time. You can make your own decision about whether you think that does or doesn't constitute jealousy. A lot of black people will become angry if you bring this up, but I wasn't the one going around terrorizing other children for their skin color. That's what they did to me. So this comment is actually very common. I've noticed the same thing where it's like, I rarely ever talk about skin tone. Um, I had never even heard of colorism. Like I didn't know that colorism even still existed until um, the documentary Dark Girls came out. And then until like, you know, my teachers and stuff, they would make comments about it, but I didn't think it was as common as it was. I didn't think that like every unambiguous dark skinned black woman for the most part was thinking about her skin tone or anything like that. So usually it was other people that were bringing up my skin tone or bringing up other people's skin tone or like comparing you to other light skins. Has anyone else had that done to them where it's like, a darker skin unambiguous person will compare how light your skin is to someone else's or they will randomly bring up so and so is lighter than you or my sister is lighter than you or yeah my daughter she's actually half white she's biracial um you are a black and asian so you know she's lighter than you because she's half white i've never really witnessed this amongst people of my community i've mainly witnessed this between like unambiguous model racial dark skin black people um, because like, for example, with me and my siblings, we are all like light skin, um, all different shades of lighter skin. Some of us are more caramel. Some of us are more high yellow. And I had never compared my skin tone to other people until people in my family brought it up. Like my dad, who is an unambiguous monoracial dark skin black man. So this whole narrative that all of us are just colorists and that we're just like um, walking around talking about our skin tones 24 seven or making being light skinned our whole personality. It's like, no, a lot of other people will project that onto us and they will make it our personality. This person says, thank you for putting this so well. I had the same experience, always being told I thought I was better than them when in reality that never even began to cross my mind. I'm finding it so weird how so many other women still act like jealousy simply could have never existed over skin tones. Like, why are you trying to gaslight people and just say it was us that was the problem? I've noticed that in the unambiguous monoracial black community, they have an issue with um, admitting jealousy or insecurities or like talking about them. And you know what? That's fine. You definitely don't have to talk about that stuff on the internet. Um, but I do think that if you want to overcome certain things and have confidence, you have to at least admit to yourself when you are jealous of someone else. Somebody else responded and they said, you're welcome. I've literally had light skinned family members who have been attacked for being light skinned and people will still desperately deny that this is possible. One of my light skinned aunts was jumped as a teen girl by black girls at her school who ripped out her hair and beat her up. She is the meekest, most humble woman you've ever met but people will assume she thinks she's superior just because she's attractive and light-skinned. It's pure projection. I think people gaslight mixed and light-skinned people over this because they don't want to admit this is how they feel too. They've felt the jealousy, the anger, and envy over someone lighter, and they don't want to give lighter people that power by admitting that they do envy them. I didn't choose my skin tone any more than they did theirs. Now, a lot of my experiences around dark-skinned black women when I was a child or teen make so much sense. There has been a deeply observable pattern to the way they tend to treat me, with suspicion, scorn, and disgust. Yet I've been followed around by the same black women who have admitted they're trying to knock me off my high horse. That's a pedestal they put me on. I didn't ask to be the object of their anger. 
Yes, I would have never known how common these experiences are for a lighter skinned woman if that light girls documentary hadn't came out and if it would not have been for YouTube channels like this one because literally hundreds of you guys are writing in your um, story times. We've been telling stories on this channel and there are thousands of comments on this channel where there are thousands of other light skinned women from all over the world, not even just the United States because I have people following this channel from different countries and people are saying that they have been the object of suspicion. Like people randomly are suspicious of you. They suspect you're trying to steal their man. They suspect that you're a colorist. Um, they're automatically uh, suspecting that you think you're better than them. And this all comes from their own internalized colorism. So they have been told by other dark skinned black people that they're at the bottom. And so they've started to believe it. And so then they start to believe that anyone who is not dark skinned thinks that they're at the top or thinks that they're above them. This other person responded and said, yes, as I started reading this thread, I thought when I was a kid, this was happening as recently as a few jobs ago. That's another thing I've noticed is that Whenever a dark-skinned, unambiguous black woman brings up her colorism experience, usually she talks about it just on a, ma on a macro level. So she will talk about Hollywood. She will usually talk about her dating experiences with black men. But I haven't really heard as many women talking about being um, the victims of colorism as an adult. And then if they say that a mixed or light-skinned woman bullied them, usually it's like in childhood. Meanwhile, over here on our side, with mixed people, we've got all kinds of people who are racist against mixed black people. Um, we've got all kinds of stories about how women at our jobs currently are trying to like be mean to us. Or, you know, even I got called a colorist for not preferring unambiguous dark skinned black men. Actually, I've been called a colorist twice over the past couple of years because other people, dark skinned black people, monoracial, they asked me if I was attracted to a particular black man. One of them was just a random black man that was out by the pool when I was hanging out with my friends. And I was like, no, like, no thanks, basically, when she asked if I thought he was cute. And I was like, oh, no, I'm he's not really like my type or whatever. And I didn't mean not my type as in skin tone, but she took it that way. And then another time I got called like racist and colorist because a black man at my job asked me if I found Jonathan Majors attractive. I didn't know who he was. He just pulled up a picture of him and I was like, uh, no. And then, you know, he tried to gaslight me or whatever. But one thing I've noticed is that a lot of mixed race women, a lot of lighter skinned women or dark women who go through um, texturism and stuff, I've noticed that a lot of the stories that we have they are current stories from our adulthood. These are things that are happening currently to us. This isn't something where it's just people said or did certain things when they were young and ignorant and now we haven't experienced colorism in 20 or 30 years. No, for a lot of us over here, these are things that are still happening to this day. This person says, so sorry, sadly it doesn't go away either. There is a woman at the gym I go to that always interrupts my conversation with other women, stands in front of them with her back towards me as if I am invisible. I am mixed, long hair, English accent, good gym physique. She has very short hair and is attractive, but unattractive in her hatred of me. I don't even know her name. Not young either. I give up. So this is another comment about a woman who is currently experiencing this treatment as an adult. Another person said, honestly, I feel like many black people, specifically online, have an obsession with trying to make mixed people feel bad or humbled by putting themselves in hypothetical situations. I only feel that way because I've seen other black people online literally say they want to humble mixed people or fully light-skinned black people. I've seen that as well. Even if you go to some of the channels, they will say things like, oh, I'm not going to wear curly hair because I'd never want a mixed woman to think that I like her hair. I never want a mixed woman to think that I want to look like her. Have you ever heard me make any comments like that on this channel? I have never in my life said, I would never tan my skin because I don't want dark skinned black women to think that I want to be darker. I would never wear 4C extensions because I don't want girls with 4C hair to think I want their hair texture. I would never say something like that because I can acknowledge the beauty of women with different phenotypes than me. So I think that dark skin is beautiful. I think that 4C hair is beautiful, but I've noticed that we don't receive that same energy from a lot of unambiguous monoracial people because they view it as complimenting us is like, you know, pedestalization. They don't understand the difference between a compliment and being pedestalized. In fact, I've even heard some of them go as far as saying that they won't allow their family members to compliment their mixed race children, um, like for the divesters and stuff. Like I've heard of some unambiguous black women saying that when they have mixed daughters, 
They don't want to allow people to compliment them. And it's like, imagine your own mother not wanting family members to compliment you. Imagine never receiving a compliment from your own mother as a little mixed girl. Imagine never receiving compliments from your extended family because your mother has gone behind your back and told your aunts and your uncles and grandparents, hey, don't compliment my daughter because she's light-skinned. She's already gonna think she's better. So like, don't give her any compliments. Don't give her any validation. I don't want her self-esteem to be raised in this house because she's probably gonna be pedestalized outside of the house. Imagine having family members like that. And believe it or not, that's actually not far-fetched because one of the biggest divestment content creators has actually made statements like that publicly. But let's look at this comment. She says, well, we can talk about it here. I was bullied by my mother's best throughout my whole childhood. She was a dark-skinned British woman of Jamaican descent. The reason why this happened? Because a black man who is a mutual friend of my mother and her best friend said that I would grow up to break hearts but didn't say the same about her dark-skinned daughter. Her daughter was like three years old, and I was only six. I got beaten by my mother constantly over the lies that bitch told. She would invite me over to stay with her daughter or take us out only to bring me home and make up lies about me to my mother. If that wasn't bad enough, I was bullied by my mother and stepfather because I didn't have white skin like them. I do have empathy for black women because at the end of the day, black men elevate us and white women over them. That stuff must hurt, but it doesn't excuse a grown woman bullying a child. This is something else that I've noticed as well, where sometimes the older women in your own family will try to humble you ahead of time. It's almost as if they have this mindset of, hey, I know she's going to be considered pretty in society, so let me make sure that I humble her just enough to where she still has insecurities even when she goes out in the real world. Here's another post that I found on Reddit. This one says, I wish I was brown slash mixed or overall have a light skin color. 16 year old male. I am a chocolate brown, a bit lighter than Kevin Hart. I've been hating being black for so long. This world is so unfair. White guys are seen as more attractive and better looking while black guys have to deal with racism. I literally feel like I'm not attractive because I am black. If I was white, I'd have a lot more self-confidence, man. White people can have many different accents, but to some people, black people can only sound one particular way, black American. I'm not American, and I have a white accent. Honestly, if only I was white or brown, preferably light brown, to go with my accent, it would be fine. Most people in the world are white, and there has been videos and experiments comparing an attractive black guy versus a white guy, and guess who the girls chose? Most of them chose the white guys. Another thing I'm envious about white people is their hair. Some women even find it attractive when they stroke their hair, and also they can position their hair and stuff. But can black guys do that? Probably not. We are born with a dumb hairstyle that's extremely short and a pain to grow. Lighter skinned guys overall are considered more attractive than black guys. The biggest issue I have isn't really just my skin color, but my hair. The default hair we were born with, like the one Kevin Hart has, it's just short and it doesn't look good on me. I hate how I look when it's short. I look better with a lot of hair, but my school says I should cut it when it gets to a certain level. So sometimes I have to get a haircut and make it short. I don't want to take pictures because I don't like how I look. I really want to face reveal in a Discord server I've been comfortable in for a while, but I can't do that because I'm black. If I was mixed, then I would have had a lot more confidence. I just hate being black so much that if I take a selfie, I instantly delete it. Oh, guess what? A girl I've been DMing and trying to get with just asked for my selfie. I guess our conversation ends here. So you can see that even with unambiguous monoracial dark-skinned black men, it's the same rhetoric. And so what I've noticed is that unambiguous people, men and women, they'll get together and they'll have children, dark-skinned unambiguous children, and then they will project that colorism onto the child. And then that child will grow up and have internalized colorism. And then they will project this pedestal onto us and assume that we think we're better or that we're like colorists and all this other stuff. The next one says, I might ruffle a few feathers with this, but the truth is that black women are colorists and often propel women they want to look like to superstardom while playing other more talented artists dust. Ice Spice and Tyla are indeed desirable to music execs, but their fan bases are primarily made of black and brown women slash queer folk. While it's true that Ice Spice may have been created, like we all know she's not beating the industry plant allegations, it was black women who made her big in the first place, and it's black women who constantly defend her from hate on social media. 
We have to reckon with our own internal colorism, self-hate, and desire to look other than black. These girls are feeding us an image that a lot of black women desire, and it's really sad. Rico Nasty is also mixed, but because she doesn't have the baddie aesthetic, her music isn't popping as much. Doechi is supremely talented, yet never talked about because she is dark-skinned. Kenzo B spits better than Ice Spice and is from NYC, but she's not talked about either because she's petite. This is exactly what I've been saying on this channel for years. The same unambiguous women who claim that lighter women are only popular because of colorism, those women, they're the ones making videos about Ice Spice. I told you guys, I had never heard of Mariah the Scientist. I had never heard of half these artists that these women were talking about. So their YouTube channels with hundreds of thousands of, of subscribers, those channels like making videos about that artist, that is actually promoting that artist. Like that is, it, it caused me to download the albums of Mariah the Scientist. Um, I am now a stan of Tyla, by the way, be sure to um, listen to Tyla's new album. I love that we've got a beautiful Blasian girl who is representing for the Blasian aesthetic. I have also added Tyla's sister, Sydney Seethel. I have added her to my bank of images that I'm gonna be using in my Exoticals United editing stuff, like for the videos and stuff. So I'm so glad that we have like diverse phenotypes being represented in the media. Um, but I have noticed that oftentimes unambiguous women and men, they will promote us, listen to our music. They won't listen to the music of women who look like them. They won't make sure that Ari Lennox is as popping as possible, but they will listen to someone like Chloe Bailey who has a light skin tone. And I've noticed that oftentimes it's because they want to be uh, approximated to us. And so even if they look nothing like Chloe and Hallie, they will use Chloe and Hallie's monoracial blackness as a way to almost ride their coattails. But then they will get mad later on and say, hey, I don't look like her. So like the beauty that she has, it's not trickling to me. But Chloe and Hallie, their beauty, their beauty will trickle more to somebody like myself or somebody who has maybe a similar skin tone because all I have to do is put my hair in full locks and boom, I can look like Chloe or Hallie if I want to. Let's look at another comment. This one says, why are a lot of the popular R&B and rap girlies light skin? She says, I'm not trying to throw shade, but I'm getting a little sick of it now and it's so obvious what's going on. Maybe it's because I've been experiencing so much bullying online as of late due to my blackness that I'm feeling extra sensitive right now. Why does the industry promote light skin ambiguous girlies on us so much? I've been hearing the song Water by Tyla, who is a South African R&B artist, all over my Instagram feed. And at first I thought it was a cute song, but now it's an earworm. And I was wondering why is everyone using this sound? Apparently there's a challenge for it. But I got curious and looked for the music video to see what she looked like. And before I even looked for the video, I said, I bet you this girl looks a certain way. That's why the song is so popular. And lo and behold, I was right. She is multiracial, small features, olive skin, under age 25, thin. No wonder her song blew up. It's a cute song, but I'm like, damn. I just know if she didn't look like that, we wouldn't have even heard of Water. She already has 10 million monthly listeners on Spotify. And to put that into perspective, Thames has 14 million. In just a short amount of time, I'd argue the popularity of just one song, this girl is just shy of 4 million listeners close to Thames. And Thames has been doing shows, been winning awards, been invited to big events, and Thames is African too. In R&B and rap, I feel like it's the girls who are dominating the scene are only the light-skinned girls with a slim, thick body. They are the only ones who ever get any streams. They're the only ones who ever get invited to do big things, but the dark-skinned girls have to stay home, so to speak. Like, no shade to Ice Spice, but come on. She was invited to the freaking Met Gala and called the Princess of Rap within a year or two of blowing up. Not even Megan the Stallion got invited that fast. Hell, even Carisha just barely made it to the Met Gala, and she wasn't even with JT, and the city girls were an actual movement. They changed the culture. Had everybody and their mama saying period and flewed out. But because Ice Spice looks the way she does, light skin, slim thick, aka every man's wet dream, she got so much more visibility than a lot of girls have. And y'all, I'm tired. I am dark skinned and fat, and I follow entertainment, and I am a musician, and it's just so discouraging to see this in the media time and time again. There is so much talent out there that we overlook just because they don't fit a man's ideal of sexy. Why should a female artist have to look desirable for you to want to listen to them? They don't do that to men. I found that last sentence interesting. Why should a female artist have to look desirable for you to want to listen to them? I have never thought about that until today. 
I was today years old when I even considered the attractiveness of an artist before listening to them. I've never in my life said, I like this song, I wonder what she looks like, and that's going to determine whether or not I support her. Nope, never done that in my life, never heard of that until just now as I am sitting and recording this YouTube video. So this says more about the person posting it, that she is the type of woman who decides who she's going to follow based on like how they look or whatever. Like for me, now I try to favor women who look more like myself because I see that like, you know, I want my phenotype to be represented or whatever. But honestly, this doesn't mean that I don't listen to white women who are singers or unambiguous women or, you know, Asian women. I still listen to music from like everybody. But I found that interesting that she mentioned that, like, why do they have to be desirable for you to want to listen to them? And it makes me wonder about unambiguous black women. Like, is that something that they're looking into? Because for example, I had never really thought about Ari Lennox's appearance when I was listening to her music. I just thought about the songs that she was singing and I noticed that people would, they would compare her appearance to um, Chloe Bailey, then they will say, well, everybody's listening to Chloe Bailey, nobody's listening to Ari Lennox because Chloe Bailey is benefiting from colorism. And so it makes me wonder like, well, are you guys trying to pump up Chloe Bailey because you'd rather be associated with Chloe Bailey's beauty and you'd rather have Chloe Bailey represent you? and represent your blackness rather than Ari Lennox? Because I had never thought about that until other people started saying it. But let's look at this comment. Someone says, colorism, and you're not alone. There is a large percentage of us black women who feel the same way you feel. We are only safe to talk about it in select groups because we are silenced or called jealous and bitter. But we hear you and we see you. I feel the same way about Ice Spice and Tyla blowing up. And it's going to keep happening while women who look like us keep getting pushed to the back. It's almost like they need us to be at the bottom so they can stand on our shoulders. While I say enough, we have to come together and start supporting dark-skinned women more. Stop giving these other entertainers your money and time. I know it's hard because they become so popular and it's like we can't escape it, but we have to try. Uplift dark-skinned black women. Exactly. If you want to see more women with your phenotype uh, being represented, then you can support them. By the way, Ryan Destiny has a new song. Ryan Destiny is mixed race. Please be sure to listen to her. Um, and to be honest... I mean, it does make me wonder if these women are kind of clout chasing off of the beauty of, of someone like Ice Spice or, you know, they want to be associated with someone like Beyonce. They definitely want to be associated with women like Ryan Destiny or Justine Skye, which is why they won't let dark-skinned mixed women be mixed. They love claiming dark-skinned mixed women as unambiguous black women when they're not. So I found this other comment on Lipstick Alley. This girl says, have any of you ever known a poor, light-skinned family? I was just thinking today that I have never known any poor black families that consisted of nothing but light-skinned individuals. I don't mean a family with a diverse color range, but everyone in the family is more or less light-skinned. The father, the mother, and all the children. I live in a small town down south, and I have never known any light-skinned family to have a low socioeconomic status. Most of the light-skinned families are either upper class or middle class by small town standards. I've seen plenty of poor white families, but never any poor light-skinned black families. By the way, I am talking about African Americans, not Afro-Hispanics. So the fact that this is even a question and like a talking point online is just extremely weird to me. Like I've never in my life equated poverty or wealth to a skin tone. So this is giving you kind of insight into this person's mindset. By the way, this was found on Lipstick Alley which is a place where a lot of unambiguous black women like to hang out and kind of chat. So I thought this was interesting that she is bringing up that she's never met a poor family full of light-skinned people. Mom, dad, children are all light-skinned. But I guess my thing is, why are you even thinking about that? Like, do you not have other things to think about? Like, who cares about the socioeconomic status? Like, no offense, but who cares about the socioeconomic status of random light-skinned strangers that you don't know? So this is just another insight onto how obsessed some people are with your skin tone. Someone else says, I keep getting rejected because I'm not light-skinned. I'm so fed up with the dating scene. I'm a 29-year-old black woman and I am in the darker skin complexion. And I've tried dating apps, bars, work settings, getting to know men in my social circle to possibly be more, but it seems like the main issue is how I look. I am overweight and I've been told I'm too dark. I cried a little when I saw this man's profile that had all the qualities I look for in a man, and he is also black, but his bio read, swipe right if you light-skinned baddie. 
I have men in my social friend group, mostly black, that talk down about women and they will disqualify them for being too dark and always go for either a light-skinned girl or a girl of a different race like foreign or white. I feel like black women are the most undesired race. So that's yet another toxic talking point that they tell themselves. Um, She says, I'm starting to feel insecure about how I look, my weight, and color. I'm trying to lose weight. I know the weight is something I can change, but the color isn't really something I can do about it. I tried natural healthy remedies like milk baths. I heard skin lightens from bathing in milk. It does. I tried Greek yogurt masks too. I just feel like crap about myself after being in the dating scene for some time. But now I'm feeling hopeless after being in the dating scene when I just want to find love and settle down. Um, Being lighter is not going to solve her dating problems. Uh, First of all, she talked about being overweight. Um, I personally feel like fat phobia is like more more of a thing or whatever, or like body types. I feel like people, when it comes to discrimination, I do think people are more likely to discriminate against you if you're obese versus if you have like a chocolate skin tone or something like that. Um, but once again, she's blaming her, her dating failures on her skin tone. She said nothing about her weight. Like she mentioned that she was overweight, but notice how she didn't blame her dating woes on that. She said nothing about her social skills or her confidence level. Nope, it was all just because she's not light-skinned. That's why she's apparently not finding the black man of her dreams. But for the people who are making the talking point of no one is jealous of light skin or like nobody cares about light skin or nobody wants that skin tone or people who try to use different humbling tactics against those who are lighter than them, um, I do feel like it is possible for people to be jealous or envious of certain skin tones or to feel resentful that they don't have those particular skin tones, okay? I know it may be um, offensive hearing it coming from a lighter skinned person, but I'm not going to be silenced out of these talking points. And for those of you who are watching this channel, what do you ladies think? Have you ever had people randomly be mean to you because of your skin tone? Or have you ever had people be jealous of you because of your complexion or make comments that you only got the relationship you have because of your skin tone or you only get attention because of your skin tone? What do you ladies think? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.